In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create huge images with your Mavic Mini. What's going on guys? Shooting Davis, so good to see your faces. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what I'm about, I'm a photographer from London that now lives here in Los Angeles and I make photo and video editing tutorials. So if that sounds like something of interest to you, then please do consider subscribing. In this video, I'm gonna show you three different ways of stitching panoramics together using your Mavic Mini. And to make things easier for you guys, I've left time codes down so you can skip forward to the section that you want. Or you can just stick around and watch the whole video with me. It's up to you. But before we get started, let's talk about the Mavic Mini's biggest weak point, and that is the 12 megapixel camera that it has. Okay, it's good enough for posting on Instagram, Facebook, or sharing with your friends and family, but it doesn't really hold up when it comes to printing. Let's say that you went on a trip. Okay, not right now because there's a pandemic on, but hypothetically, let's say that you went on the trip and you took some amazing photos with your Mavic Mini and you wanted to get them printed to remind you of the good times you had on that trip. The 12 megapixel camera from the DJI Mavic Mini is 4000 by 3000 pixels, which is roughly the size of an A4 print. And with a slight enlargement, you might get away with A3. But wait, aren't you destroying image quality? Yes, Dave, yes you are. This is where stitching images together comes in handy. Why limit yourself to small prints when you can easily create a much bigger one? Okay, so now we know the why, let's go through the how. Before you go shooting your load up in the sky, it is a good practice to have a good idea of what you want your final image to look like. What do I mean by that? Well, do you want a horizontal panorama or do you want a vertical panorama? Start by simply flying your drone around the sky looking for your subject matter. And then once you've found it or identified it, tilt your camera up and down or maybe left and right so you can figure out what composition works for you. This will help you visualize the start and end of your panoramic. It is also a good idea to make sure that you have enough room left and right to get everything that you want in. Also, if you want to be centered up on a subject, now is the time to take the time to make sure you're centered perfectly on your subject. Honestly, take your time here. You will thank yourself later on. Now we need to talk about settings a little bit. Now, if you're not used to shooting in manual, fear not, I'm gonna make this as simple as possible for you. Basically, what you wanna make sure of is that every single image you take has the same exposure. So hit the auto button down on the bottom right of your screen and then select a shutter speed. Now, what you're looking for here is where the image starts to look pleasing. And you can check this by looking directly down and the directly forwards if you're doing a top down panoramic or looking left and looking right and making sure the exposure is even all the way. You don't want the camera changing its settings every time you take a photo otherwise when you come to stitch it's not going to match and it's going to look a bit odd so select the shutter speed appropriate that makes the image look as best as it can for you you don't have to be a master here we're just looking to make sure that every image captured is the same brightness and it's the same story for white balance. Here you wanna make sure that you dial in your white balance accurately so that your image looks consistent all the way through. You don't want it set to auto and changing from warm to cool as you sweep through the image. It is unlikely that it will change, but it's just nice for peace of mind to set it manually and there you got it dialed in. A good rule of thumb when you're shooting during the day on a sunny day is to set your white balance to 5600 Kelvin. This way your image will match the light and sunny conditions that you're shooting in. Or alternatively, you can just set the white balance to whatever is pleasing to your eye. Now it comes on to shooting. There isn't really much to say here. Once you've dialed in your settings and you're framed up nicely on your subject, I like to start shooting up to down if I'm doing a vertical panoramic or left to right when doing a horizontal panoramic. There's no right and wrong way of doing this. I just like to do it that way. It makes it easier for me to go back and see which images I shot. And if you mess up, just start again. There really is no rush when shooting. It is also a good idea to shoot a little bit extra than you actually need. This will give you a little bit more room when it comes to cropping in the editing phase. Phew, still with me? Good. Now I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button as we're about to jump into the best part, editing. 
First up is Lightroom. Now things are very easy inside Lightroom. Once you've got all your images imported that you want to stitch, simply select the first, shift and select the last one. That will select all of the images for you. And then what you want to do is come up to the top here, hit photo and we go to photo merge and then just simply hit panorama. Now this will take a little bit of time depending on the specs of your machine. Mine is a kind of decent 13 inch MacBook Pro. So it happens quite quickly. Once it does, you'll get this preview built out here. So there are a couple of things that we can play around with here. First of all, I like to play around with boundary warp. So you see these white edges around the side of the image. If we play with that, it's basically gonna stretch out the image to fill those in nicely. That's looking pretty good. You can, of course, change the uh, projection method that you have. So you can go from spherical and see what that looks like. Again, it's gonna build its preview. That looks okay. Let's go to perspective. Perspective is going to get rid of that kind of fisheye look and try and make things a little bit more rectilinear. Um, unfortunately, it won't do it actually for my one. So we're going to go with cylindrical again. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. And simply hit merge and that's it. It's pretty simple inside Lightroom. It's very quick, just a few button clicks and then you're instantly getting yourself a stitched panorama. And that's pretty cool. And from there, you can go ahead and crop it to whatever size you want. You can also edit it like you would any other normal photo and then export it to your friends and family or get it printed up on your wall inside your house. Now let's have a look inside Photoshop. The steps are a little bit different, but the process is roughly the same. First of all, come up to File. Then we're gonna scroll down to Automate. Once you're inside there, you want to hit photo merge. Now this is going to bring up a dialog box and what you want to do is browse for the photos that you want to use. So I have this set down here. So let's go bigger pictures, demo, and let's select these images. Hit open. That's going to drop them into here. So you can just double check that you've got the right amount of exposure that you want. Um, I'm going to leave this on auto for now and let Photoshop figure out the rest and see how that works. So I'm gonna go and hit OK, and this is basically gonna load all of those files into stack and then try and align them and then blend each exposure into each other so they get a nice seamless panoramic. So Photoshop has aligned all the images and made an attempt at blending them all together. However, we're not quite finished here yet. As you can see, it's in the wrong orientation and we still have those nasty gaps in our image. So let's see if we can fix that. So I've selected all of the layers and what you're gonna do is press Command or Control E and that's gonna flatten them all together. Then I'll come up to Image and then I'll go to Image Rotation and we want to go 90 degrees counterclockwise. So we get it, so let's have a zoom out. Okie dokie, now let's see if we can use something like Content Aware Fill. So if we do Command, uh, so all I did there was um, Command or Control click on the layer. You can see the marching ants around the perimeter. I'm gonna do Command Shift I to invert that selection. And then I'm gonna come up and go Edit Content Aware Fill and see if that will actually fill in those edges. So let's have a look and see if this works. Okay, let's have a look and see how this got on with that. So, zoom in and have a look around some of the edges because Photoshop doesn't always do the best job. And if you can hear my Mac whirring away, it's quite labor intensive to do that much uh, content aware feel. So, the grass looks fine. There's a few little errors around here. Yeah, you see that the curb's not being carried across. Uh, that's actually me down there standing flying the drone. Yeah, there's a few smudgy areas around that. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, delete that layer so we can actually see where the gaps are. And then I'm going to bring out the crop tool. Uh, let's clear this. And then we can like, drag it up so we can get the exact crop that we want. Drag the bottom down. Something like that. Bring the edges in. like that. But what if you don't have an Adobe subscription? What if you aren't a photographer and you're just a hobbyist with a Mavic Mini and you want to make bigger images? Is there a free alternative? Well, you're in luck. I actually have two of them for you, uh, although I can only show you one of them because I'm on a Mac and the other one is Windows only. So let's have a look at that. First up is Panorama Stitcher Mini. Now this is actually available through the App Store and it is free, although free for the first panoramic stitches that you do. It is actually $15 if you want the unlimited version. Now I can safely say having used this once before that if I didn't have an Adobe subscription, I would 100% buy this app because it's very easy to use and the results are pretty astonishing. 
Okay, so here's Panorama Stitcher Mini. This is what the dialogue looks like when you actually open up the software and then you can actually drag and drop your own photos in there or you can come up and go file and import which is what I'm going to do and then these are the five photos that I want selected. Hit open and it's going to stitch those images automatically and as simple as that. So this is a pretty cool tool. I actually really, really like using this one. So just going to let it do its thing for now and there we go. As quick as that is actually stitch the image. Now what's cool about this is you can adjust the uh, the crop to however you want. So if you want to get rid of some of these edges, like so, like that. And if you think, oh, it's a little bit dull, we can actually brighten up the exposure. So that's quite nice that it's actually built in there. That's far too far, David. Let's be a bit more sensible about this. Plus five, 0.5, that is good. Um, and what's cool is it also shows us down here in the bottom right what the resolution of our stitched image is. So this is actually equivalent to a 30.1 megapixel camera, which is pretty cool considering that the Mavic Mini is only a 12 megapixel camera. Once you're happy with your edits inside Panorama Stitcher Mini, simply go down to the bottom right, hit save, give it a name, so we're going to call this Pano, hit save, and it's going to save out your panoramic, and you're done. The other free software is Microsoft Ice. Now, as I mentioned before, I can't run this on my MacBook, but if you've got a PC, then feel free to try it out for yourself. It looks very promising, and I'd love to be able to show you, but unfortunately, I can't. However, if you want either of these free pieces of software, I'll leave a link down in the description for you, so you can go and check it out yourself. So there you have it. I've given you three, or rather four, different ways of creating panoramas with your Mavic Mini. I've given you tips on how to frame up, how to shoot, and how to edit them. Now it is time for you to go out and create some amazing panoramas yourself. You can experiment by combining these techniques from the horizontal and the vertical together to make even bigger images. Well, that is all from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And as always, guys, I have been at Shooting Dave, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.